Yeah. Okay. Right. So temperature, yeah, so if press that, obviously yeah. reduces it, plus increases it. So you see we've got the heating running at the moment. The next one is your water heating. Okay, mm -hmm. so you can see that on that's your that's your normal running for heating. Yeah. Okay, you can't physically switch it off. As soon as you've got the system up and running, it automatically it, it, to it starts to yeah, it starts to heat your water. Okay. If you want to, you can is boost it. So that's a boost function now. Yeah. So the button's gone green, you've got a full triangle coloured in. Yeah. That's concentrate all the heating on hot water now. Okay, if I just go back to your main screen, you see the heating has been switched off. Okay. So that's the only time it will physically switch the heating off because of the water boost function has been set. And when it hits the temperature it needs to, does it automatically go back? Yes. So okay. what, what it will do, it will run for 30 minutes. Right. Okay, unless you physically, you can manually turn it back anyway. Okay. Okay, so you could just switch it off like that. Yeah. But if you want the, the water boost to function, boost. It, maybe if you want to use the shower on board, you want that extra hot water, you put it on to boost. As I said, it will shut the heating down until 30 minutes have passed. It goes goes back, to, it resets to normal function, allows heating to come on, obviously, as long as it's in the temperature range. Okay. okay. Good. Yeah, good. Next one. Yeah. So that's your energy. So that's electric off. Yeah. So that's switching your electric off. You can see so that. Go there. That's your that's your electric is it's ready just there. In. Yeah. That's it. So that one you got operate either on one kilowatt, two kilowatt, or three kilowatt. And what or, what's or yeah. gas off. Gas, gas on. on. And what's the recommended run for the kilowatts? It all depends on one what site you're on. Yeah. What time of year it is. So say it was in the summer. Yeah. The likelihood is that it's only going, you're only going to need to heat the water. Yeah. So, so one you don't need one, one or two kilowatt, probably sufficient, you won't need gas. Okay? Yeah. Obviously, with the likelihood of this weather in this country, yeah. you may want a bit of heating. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, te temperature drops tend to be a, a summer evening anyway, doesn't it? But mm -hmm. you may want a bit of heating, so two kilowatts probably sufficient just to take the chill off the air. And if you're out in January? Yeah, if you're out in three. January, you might want up to three kilowatt, or you, you may find that obviously there's a lot of power in three kilowatts. So if you depend on what bollard you're connected to and what site you're on, yep. if you start using that, the yep. electric on your cooker, this, your fridge is on electric, hair dryer, anything all like that, it all adds up to quite a bit of energy. So you may may drop it down to say two kilowatts and gas, or one yep. kilo, or one kilowatt and gas, which is going to give you sufficient heat for your for your room and your water. Okay. Okay. And less likely to trip the bollard that's out there. Okay. All right. What it will do, it will. Use both energies from cold to get up to the temperature, then it will shut the gas off and can continue running on the electric until someone like myself leaves the door wide open. Temperature drops rapid. Same with if you use all your hot water, then the gas will kick back in again to boost that temperature back up. Okay. So you're not using the gas all the time, it's just when it needs it. Got you. All right? Yeah, good. Good. Happy with that so far. So you're so happy, far, yeah. happy you can change the temperature up or down. Yeah, boost the water. Boost the water. Change the energy, electric, the gas. The yeah, the power. Yeah, and it will let you know if the gas fails. What you'll see is it say gas failure, and two yellow tr warning triangles will come on the main screen. Normal reason for that is that one, you either you haven't turned the gas on, or you've or run you out of gas, yeah. or it's got air in the system. So all you do is just obviously check all them things, then it should reset. Okay. Okay. What's yeah. this little gadget, Dan? If you look for Aldi heating. Yeah. And they've got a video of the from the company itself, which is quite a good one, which is about five seven minutes long. Which is more or less what I've just explained as well. Okay, we'll have a look at that on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. good. Okay. All right. All right. Anyway, so obviously, if you need any, you want to use any time, you've got to set the clock, which is that one there. Yeah. That's what is called the reduced temperature timer. So a lot of people don't like it too hot at night. What you can do is set a timer, say from say ten o'clock to ten o'clock or whatever overnight, at a lower temperature. It won't reduce the temperature down. Obviously, it just drops naturally until it gets to that, and then it will maintain at that. Okay. Obviously, after a few seconds, it goes back to your main screen. Mm -hmm. That one there is what is called a delayed timer. Yeah. So what that will do is say you add it on a seasonal pitch, or you've got it set up at home, like like myself over winter, you like to air, air it out. You can set it to come on uh, for one day a week. So say you set it up to come on, say I don't know, ten o'clock on a Friday morning. It'll come on then, run for twenty-four hours, then switch itself off. In seven days' time, it'll repeat. Gosh, that's good. Okay. These ones here, that's all to do with the pump setting. So this, the pump that's obviously turning the uh, the heat around the van. Yeah. You can. There's different settings you can have on that. At the moment, it's thermostatically controlled, so it obviously cuts cuts out when it gets to temperature. Um, what you can have it is continuously on, if you wanted to. So it's just pouring heat continuously on. The only thing that may suffer is your water temperature, because obviously the heat is being taken away from the boiler all the time. Yeah. You can set it to all the different settings as well, as in um, 
voltage wise it's, it's running at 12 volt at the moment it, so it always running on 12 volt anyway but it sometimes you, you can set it to 240 mm -hmm. so it only comes on when it's 2 240 connected <coughs> why why i'm not sure but there's all these different options too many options yeah too many days, options that one that won't do anything on this one it's an added extra for level of gas all right that one there is not pac-man Oh, as it I was looks like, say, yeah, no, it it's not, you can't play Pac-Man on it. <laughs> it it's, to, it's to do with bacteria in your hot water tank, so oh, you can okay. get Legionnaires disease, things like that. If you've got the timers, uh, the the clock set, and that switched on, it will automatically come on roughly two o'clock in the morning to boost, like the water boost function, to increase the temperature in the water to kill. Just to keep the bugs away. That's it, yeah. So what do you do to that? Just press it. Just yeah, just switch it on, yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you just press that, on or off. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That, that one there is to calibrate the uh, thermostat. Which it will offset the temperature. So if say it's showing maximum 30 degrees on the screen, obviously it's a lot colder. The temperature, uh, the heat is not going to come on because he thinks it's at maximum. Mm. You may need to what you call offset the temperature by using that one there. Okay. Okay. Next one. Every time we press the screen, it goes beep. You can switch that off there. Yeah. Brightness of your screen. Yeah. Language. If you want to talk French or German to it. Yeah. That one lock there. It. Lock it. Lock that so you don't go into the further menu screen. External. This is something you could have added extra if you wanted to. Done it uh, off your, your iPhone app or something. That's it, yeah. Know. And ampage, we're talking about obviously if you every everything energy on, obviously things like that can start tripping the bo uh, the, mm. the bollard. Mm. Well, with that, you could actually drop the amount of amps that that boiler uses, but I wouldn't I wouldn't bother too much with that. You just do you want re to reduce? Agree yeah, power? that's it. Reduce it until you you're not tripping the bollard. The next one reset, obviously highlighted in red. Yeah. That's if you're having any problems, you can reset back to. Uh, Factory Fact, settings. Yeah. If you're talking to the engineer over the phone, saying you're having problems, whatever, he may ask you to go into the service button, which is um, he will it will tell him as you, as you explain over the phone that uh, what temperatures, what's happening with the boiler, what's happening with this, that, and the other. Okay. okay. Then translator. That's for external. You can plug something external in, which is what the engineers use to check out what the boiler is doing. Okay. Okay. And that's it. Back to main main menu. Lovely. All right. Yeah. Yeah. The next one up is a charger. Yeah. So as long as that's switched on, and you have got electric connected, it will charge your battery. Reverse polarity at the top there is just an indicator light. So if you go on the continent, and uh, they obviously they wire things slightly di different than what we do, if that lights up, it, it's reversed. So it's, it's so the other way around. So you just ignore it. That, no, not really. No. Oh. No. What you need to do <laughs> <laughs> is uh, get an adapter to operate off their electrics. Okay. O otherwise, everything might be going backwards. Okay. Okay. So 240 trips. You have an info note at the top there that tells you what they're connected to. Same with your 12 volt fuses. Again, info note there. System shutdown button. So even though you switch the power off there for your 12 volts, mm -hmm. when you're in, in storage or you're not using it for a certain amount of months, you can shut the system down by shutting that down there. So it's not draining your battery. Got you. Obviously, you make sure you switch it back on there when Before you come you to use it. Before you do anything else, yeah. yeah. Okay. Then okay. Then obviously radio CD player. Yeah. Happy how that works. But that, that's, oh, the that's, that's the that's the on-off button there. That's right. All oh, right, that's all I need to know. Uh, yeah. yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Gosh, they're a lot more complicated. <laughs> oh, yeah, they are. So on-off button there. So press yeah. the hold, that switches it on and off, which obviously I've just done. Electric, gas or yeah, battery. So yeah, so gas. Ooh, electric. Yeah. That fires the gas up. Yeah. So all you need to do that, it will let you know if it fails, which if I just put it to 12 volt, that's failure. Okay. Okay. So it's same failure on 12 volt because that's the 12 volt that comes from the car. Obviously oh, yeah. the car's not connected, the engine's not running, it's not going to be providing 12 volts to the fridge. Okay. If it's doing it on the gas, that means the gas hasn't lit. So all you do is check the usual things, you have turned the gas on, you have got gas, and you just press that and it will re-attempt to light it. Okay. Alright? Okay. But most people tend to run it on electric. This side of it is your temperature range. So all five lit, that's the coldest your fridge is going to be. So okay. obviously it's coming out frozen butter, then obviously it's too cold. Okay. Alright? Yeah. To open it, just press down on the big button there. Got a little contraption down this side of the fridge where the light is. See that there? That's to hold the fridge door open. Oh, so uh, right, for so, winter. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, it does work off the door mechanism itself to just operate that before you try and pull it open. Then just slide it back in mm -hmm. you make, when you come to use it. If I it's need not, to do it. So you need to push against the wall yeah. and slide it towards you. Okay. And then it just slides back. Okay. Okay, I think that out, obviously, when you're in storage, yeah. put in your sink or on the top there, it's oh, not going to get. Okay. Not take get moldy. Take, the fridge take, box. Take oh, right. the ice box. Yeah, you can out. actually take that out. Right. Then for when you get into it. Is it easy to do? Yeah. There's just two little tabs. That side, that side. Mm -hmm. You slide that towards the centre. And that just slides out. Oh my goodness. Just like that. And just 
click that in. Which is a bit, a bit more fiddly to get it in. Yeah, that's what she's always on. Yeah, right. Everybody says that. Everybody says that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that hot in there. Yeah. That bounces out and drops through this. You've had it. Expensive. Yeah. I'll sneak it under there for you for the moment. Right. To operate, if you see that does nothing on its own. Mm -hmm. So press the microwave button once. That gives you power, energy, 100%, 50%, whatever. Press it again. That gives you seconds. All right. Okay. Then just press start. It has got a uh, quick start on the start button as well. It goes up in minute increments. Start straight away. Okay. All right. Good. Okay, you see two lights on it. It's totally automatic, so you don't need to switch anything on and off, on or off. It will do it itself. Okay. Okay. So obviously, as soon as the um, battery is reduced in voltage, it will start putting power to it. Obviously, you've got a reasonable amount of light. Even though obviously we're in the shed now, it's obviously providing power. So the one on the top is indicating that it's giving the full charge of 14 and a half volts. Mm -hmm. If it turns green, it's giving 12 and a half, 13. Uh, the bottom one flashing green, that's to say it is charging. Okay. There will be occasions where them lights go out. One, it's dark, so it's not going to be operating off the uh, moon and the stars. And also, if it's fully, ch if the battery's fully charged and you've got electric connected, obviously it, it doesn't really need, need it. it. Yeah. And if, the, if you haven't got electric connected and your battery's quite low, it actually turns them two little lights off to save about that much energy to uh, put all the power to the battery. Okay. All right. Shit. I don't even, even want to put your hand on that, but it's hot. Right. All right, this is your expansion tank for your heating system. Okay. Okay. Obviously, the fluid that's running around the van is uh, separate from the water that comes out your hot tap. Mm -hmm. It's an uh, antifreeze mix. Yeah. Okay, this is the expansion tank. Before you start and it's cold, just make sure your finger width above that minimum mark. So you, that's sufficient to run the system. As it, as, okay. it, as it warms up, obviously, it will expand. If you do need to top it up, make sure you're putting the correct stuff in. Okay. So it, as I said, it's antifreeze mix. Make sure you're putting the correct stuff in. We had one customer who's put the wrong stuff in, we're not sure what, and it's gone really thick. They've had to flush the whole system out, and it's obviously expensive. So make sure do you're you get it from here. You can do, yeah. Okay. You can get it ready mixed. Okay, to top it up, all you do is remove that, unscrew the top, and you just top it up. Okay. If you haven't got any of that and you're on site, and obviously it's cold, you want to get the system up and money, you can just top it up with water. Okay. But obviously beware that it's not if, if, you don't put, if you don't put antifreeze in there soon, it'll, and if it'll, it's winter, because uh, the likelihood you're going to be wanting that in winter anyway. Mm. So, Mm. That's the time you're going to be topping it up if, okay. if you haven't already. TV aerial. So yeah. we've got directional aerial, if you had a directional yeah, aerial I've before. Done that. Yeah, yeah, so that might be slightly different than your last one. So yeah. that, that's indicating if what the top of the aerial is doing. So H horizontal should have an info note here. Oh, that's good. Okay. So if you t turn that, obviously tips tips it up, it will go into red and V mm -hmm. to show it's, it's vertical. Okay. Just make sure it's in the green before you pull it right down. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. You don't want to be extra cushions. So you just lift that at an angle. Yeah. That folds down. We'll just get that out of the way for a second. Yeah. So it's a... Oh, as oh, usual. Yeah. Apart from the table attacking me. <laughs> Move these out of the way to start with. Yeah. So it's always fun doing that. Unless when everyone's tired and wants to go to bed. Put that over that side of me. To get this out, don't put the table in first. Okay. Because you'll find out you'll have a bad back by the end of the week if you're not careful. So you got your, you can get your leg in that, that position there. So what you do is roll it out and flex back up again. Oh, okay. Right. That's good. Yeah, you see the leg, they haven't changed in 100 years of caravan or whatever. So if you see that there, that just make sure that's pulled out to the front. Okay. Yeah. Okay, then either side of the back is two little uh, press studs. I'll clip them, fold that up. And tip that rolls over, and you'll notice on the wall, point there, so press the that you use it to secure it underneath. Yeah. Fix the wall there. Go inside here. You can have an extra packing piece for there. And these are the bed guards. Which is that's why they put that flat there. So these obviously to stop anybody who's on the top bunk from falling out. So you find you've got a single one and a hinged one. They just clip together. Oh, clip. okay. And slide there. Clip into there. Yeah, so it creates yeah. a little wall. Yeah, that's it, yes. It's a big guard stopping anybody falling out. See that, we'll see that one, the folding one has to go around the corner. 